saints loved and dear.
Good evening. On behalf of Mortarboard and Omicron Delta Kappa, we'd like to welcome you to the college's annual Yule Log celebration. My name is Abigail Hartless, and I'm the vice president of Mortarboard. My name is Sarah Larimer, and I'm the vice president of Omicron Delta Kappa. Each year, Mortarboard and ODK sponsor this ceremony as a unique William and Mary tradition. We are so excited that you have joined us tonight for an evening filled with warmth and cheer for the holiday se season. As we gather tonight, we would like to take a moment to thank all of you who have already donated to our selected Yule Log charity. This year, we are donating the proceeds to the Williamsburg House of Mercy. The Williamsburg House of Mercy is a nonprofit organization that seeks to support individuals experiencing homelessness and seeks to provide emergency assistance and supportive services to those who struggle to maintain housing. The Williamsburg House of Mercy provides a safe and welcoming environment for 
them and helps them work towards regaining stability. You can donate either through the coin collection jars or the QR codes posted around the Wren Yard. From Mortarboard and ODK, we would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to House of Mercy for their tremendous work in supporting our Williamsburg community and for partnering with us tonight. If you have not yet had the chance to donate, please do so through the link on the William & Mary Ulog website. Donation jars can also be found at each of the gates and the entrance to the Great Hall. Students and members of the extended William & Mary family have decorated the beautiful paper doves displayed here on the Wren Portico, offering a visual representation of the theme's role in their cultures, faiths, and everyday lives. Student groups reflected on peace, joy, and gratitude by offering short passages to share with us tonight. Tonight is an opportunity for our community to celebrate one of its great, greatest strengths, our diversity. In the spirit of gratitude, we want to acknowledge the collective history of William & Mary as it relates to the grounds on which we celebrate tonight. Today, I will be giving the land acknowledgement. William & Mary acknowledges the indigenous peoples who are the original inhabitants of the lands our campus is on today. The Cherenhaka, Nottoway, Chickahominy, Eastern Chickahominy, Mattapanai, Monacan, Nesmond, Nottoway, Pamunkey, Potawomec, Upper Mattapanai, and Rappahannock tribes, and pay our respect to their tribal members, past and present. Next, I would like to welcome Sydney Rose McCall of the Lemon Project to acknowledge the role of enslaved people in William and Mary's history. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sydney Rose McCall, and I'm representing the Lemon Project here at William & Mary. Anyone who has walked through the historic Wren Building knows that this place is a transformative space for students, scholars, and visitors alike. Named after British architect, scientist, and part-time astronomer, Sir Christopher Wren, this 270-year-old structure is distinguished as the oldest academic building on campus. By comparison, this Independence Day marked the 246th birthday of the United States. However, like any 200-year-old history that has touched this land, both Wren and the College of William and Mary are interwoven with the histories and the legacies of slavery. This building, where students become scholars, couples marry, and people gather to worship and learn, was built by enslaved people. Christopher Wren was not only an avid star watcher, but an active stockholder in the Royal African Company. Tonight, we honor the nearly 15 million people whose humanity was exploited and nearly erased along the Middle Passage. We also hold space for the over 190 identified and still unknown enslaved people who were bound to this school as bricklayers, gardeners, builders, laundry women, cooks, and bond servants. Though many of their stories and names remain unknown, their fingerprints are still pressed into the foundation of William and Mary. Through their deep faiths and ancestral traditions, they transformed into folklorists, conjurers, memory makers, and ancestors who reclaimed both their history and their humanity. Let this season's gratitude be one of songs, stories, good work, and good trouble that protects their legacy and continues to transform our college, our community, and our world. Thank you. We hope that by recognizing our collective history tonight during this special celebration of community, we can more deeply fulfill the statement boldly put forth in the college's 1949 student handbook, those who come here belong here. Our next speaker of the evening is one of our favorite Yule Log celebrities. She's here tonight to read the classic holiday poem, Twas the Night After Finals. Please give a warm welcome to our very own Vice President for Student Affairs, Ginger Ambler. Twas the night after finals, 
And all through the college, not a creature was stirring. They were too stuffed with knowledge. Term papers were hung on the dorm walls with care in hopes that good grades would soon appear there. Bills and Marys were nestled all snug in their beds while dreams of aced finals danced round in their heads. The delis and brick house had shut down their taps and we'd all settled in for our well-deserved naps. Not a soul at the library, the hot chocolate bar gone. The whole place was silent, not just the third floor. At home, corgis slept on. But out on the lawn, AKA Sunky G, there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my loft, ouch, to, to see what was the matter. The students were cheering their exuberance loud. Whatever was happening, it drew quite a crowd. Perhaps our musicians were showing their craft. Or maybe, or maybe it was faculty. Hot debate on a raft. The roars came from Zabel, a jubilant sound. No doubt our tribe offense had another first down. The winningest season in history to date. Proud CAA champs, 10 win seasons are great. With students a-clappin' and brass horns a-tootin', the air was electric for us and Cam Newton. <laughs> Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. With the moon shining bright on our campus that night, the vista was magic. I paused for the sight. Bright lights, how they beckoned from walkways of glass in the Sadler Expansion architectural class. <laughs> a thrill to explore, a zip slice opening night, student life at the heart of our campus, just right. But where is the coffee? If caffeine you must find, stop in at Sad Roma's instead of the grind. But I heard there's a Starbucks quite soon will be here by the Wawa. No kidding. Hey, that's worth a cheer. <laughs> then what to my wondering eyes should appear but a dazzling sleigh with eight tiny reindeer and a fun furry driver sporting wings and a mane. Hey, tribe, it's our griffin flying o'er the terrain. More rapid than streakers, those reindeer they came. And he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Get ready. Now seniors. Now juniors. Now grad school's entire. On sophomores. On freshmen. Alumni and choir. He circled and circled, his brow creased with dismay. Is there really no parking place for this tribe sleigh? And, and how can it be that next May of all dates we'll be bidding farewell to that dear old dorm Yates? To the tip top of Kaplan to the top of brick walls. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. On up to the dorm roofs, his coursers they flew after stopping at Wawa for a hoagie or two. He checked out PBK where the work was near done. Arts performing will thrive there come spring. Oh, what fun. They flew past the hearth over James Blair and then they dashed by O.D. and Monroe on toward Wren. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof in clear violation of college regulations. <laughs> As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed not in red, but wore green and gold. Santa swaggers with tribe pride around the North Pole. His eyes, how they twinkled, a buzz he did feel. He quick checked his phone. It was time to be real. <laughs> and in the next moment, 
His head he did scratch to learn he was somebody's marriage patch, packed match. <laughs> he remembered our opening convocation with a smile, the wren lit and high fives extending a mile. With pep bands and clappers, wherever you roam, you'll know nothing else like it. One tribe, welcome home. A bundle of gifts he'd flung down from his sleigh so he looked like a tourist on the outlet's sale day. He unloaded gifts he was sure that would please. Cheese shop sandwiches, they're back, and fries loaded with cheese. Some green and gold gear for school spirit to show. When it comes to tribe pride, we are all in, you know. A dining and housing master plan got us snapping. One day, AC everywhere. Yes, it's gonna happen. <laughs> he smiled for our students, a better world they promote. They engage the day's issues, they speak out, and they vote. In the national, in the national rankings, our universities gleaming, U.S. News, Forbes, and Kiplinger keep those applicants streaming. We hold the top spots where other schools are just reaching internships, study abroad, and undergraduate teaching. St. Nick thought a lot about his gifts for our crew. He pondered, then knew what he needed to do. He made a great banner for the whole world to see, the best university where any could be. Santa spoke not a word, but went door to door, leaving job offers for seniors and grad admits by the score. Then laying a finger aside of his nose and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, to his team gave a yell, and away they all flew like the ducks on Crimdell. But we heard him exclaim as that sleigh flew away, you're the best, William and Mary. You each get an A. Happy holidays! Thank you, Vice President Ambler. As our community gathers this evening, we seek to reflect on our themes for Yule Log this year, peace, joy, and gratitude. Whether this is your last semester at William & Mary or your first, together our community has faced challenges and joys unlike we've ever experienced before. We want to take a moment to recognize and express our gratitude for our community's strength and resilience, and to all students, faculty, and staff as we've supported each other throughout this semester and others. Tonight, we welcome Tim Wells from University Christian Fellowship, <laughs> Samira Rahman from Muslim Student Association, Robert West from William & Mary, hello, <laughs> Joey Upadhyay from the Hindu Sikh and Jain Students Association, and Victor Adjian from the Black Student Organization. Please <laughs> Please welcome us and join us in welcoming them as they share reflections on peace, joy, and gratitude. Hi there. My name is uh, Tim Wells, and I'm representing InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. On Christmas, Christians celebrate that Jesus lovingly entered a broken world in order to show us that there is something greater to look forward to that is beyond the sadness and disappointments we often face. I've always been amazed at the humility of God of the universe, being born in, the manger, in a manger where horses and cattle ate, exposed and vulnerable. According to the book of Luke, he was wrapped in clothes and laid in a manger because there were no guest rooms available. At a time of year that's often marked by the stress of finals, travel, family obligations, I think the Christmas story can be a powerful reminder of the importance of finding ways to humbly love one another. This love can take many forms. Maybe it means giving up some study time to drive someone to the airport, or it could be leaving a full aromas gift card, punch card for a stranger, having a rough day. It's also just as important to love yourself during this season. That could look like taking a break when you need it, listening to your body, or making a choice to seek outside resources to deal with stress. 
even the smallest acts of love we undertake, when done with humility, can be just can be a reminder to others that they were created to be deeply and uniquely loved, just as they are, and a reminder to ourselves that we deserve that love just as much. The Christmas story tells us that we have the power to demonstrate that love to others and to ourselves, even in the simplest ways. Over the last year, there have been countless reasons to stress, worry, fear, but the God of the universe came to this earth in a manger to freely give us the peace and love our world so often needs. Thank you. Salam everyone. My name is Samira Rahman and I am the Vice President of the Muslim Student Association. I'm here to wish peace, mercy, and the blessings of God to our community on this chilly and cold evening. Expressions of joy need not be limited to one special occasion. In our everyday interactions, we're reminded of how easy it is to spread joy. Despite all the challenges we have faced, it is incredible to be able to stand here together today. Sharing the joy and the beauty of this season that only gets better when you spent with your loved ones. While this is the season to be jolly, finding joy and gratitude in our daily lives is an incredible blessing. On, this is a blessing that does not require a time nor a place. As the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, smiling is the most beautiful act of charity. In his smiling, we share an emotional gift, a gift of joy, one that speaks to the souls and lifts up the spirit. These small acts of kindness remind us that spreading peace and joy can be achieved in the simplest of ways. Let us be thankful for the blessings and mer mercies that we have been granted. May we all plant the seeds of peace, harmony, and gratitude in this season and beyond. Thank you, and have a great holidays. Good evening. My name is Robert West. I'm I'm the president of Hillel at William & Mary. I'm grateful to be standing before you all today. Yule Log is one of my favorite William & Mary traditions. I love how our campus community comes together to celebrate the holiday season, to be joyous and merry, and to give thanks for all the good that has happened this year. For our campus Jewish community, Yule Log is especially well-timed this year because it leads directly into Hanukkah tomorrow night. Hanukkah is a Jewish holiday that, re that recalls a time when the practice of Judaism had been outlawed. With the victory of the Maccabees against the Seleucid Empire, the Jews were able to return to their temple and resume practice. For us, Hanukkah is the story of the small overcoming the odds, the weak overcoming the mighty. The holiday calls attention to the struggles of marginalized religious groups as they strive to maintain their traditions. More generally, it's a holiday of resistance and fighting for what you believe in. The Hanukkah story feels especially poignant this year as anti-Semitism dominates the news. It doesn't seem like the greatest time to be a Jew, but quite frankly, it rarely ever does. In times like these, we take solace in all of you, our peers, teachers, neighbors, and friends, our community. We look to the helpers, all those who are kind and gracious, working to make the world a better place. You make us feel welcome and accepted, free to be ourselves, and for that, we are grateful. Because of all of you, tomorrow our Jewish community will gather together and proudly celebrate Hanukkah. Since you all may not join us tomorrow, I ask that you celebrate the Hanukkah spirit tonight and join us in remembering that we should never be at peace while there remains injustice in the world. Let each of us seek to be an eternal flame a light that gives hope and brightens even the darkest of rooms. And let's continue to work together to form an even stronger campus and global community 
in the year to come. Thank you. Hello, my name is Joey Upadhyay, and I'm representing the Hindu, Sikh, and Jain Students Association. A core belief of Hindu, Sikh, and Jain faiths is that there is a force, a force bigger than any individual that lives in all of us and binds the whole universe together. As such, this doctrine implores us to treat others with love and kindness, since ultimately we are one and the same. The Dharmic religions encourage partaking in joyful holidays, not only by putting up colorful decorations and celebrating with our friends and family, but also looking deep within ourselves and finding gratitude for who we are and what we have. Now more than ever, it is important to recognize the community that surrounds us and reach out to those with whom we are close. It is through this sense of gratitude that we may find joy and pass it on to others. On behalf of the Hindu, Sikh, and Jen Students Association, we hope that all who celebrate have a very Merry Christmas filled with love, kindness, joy, and gratitude. Thank you, and happy Yule Log. Good evening, everyone. How are we doing tonight? We good, good. Well, thank you all for joining me out here on this cold, cold night. I was shivering back there. Um, my name is Victor Adigjain, <laughs> president of the Black Student Organization, and I guess I'm here to give a couple of remarks about the past semester. As I look back on the past semester, or even more broadly, the year of 2022, one word comes to my mind. Wow. <laughs> like, I, I mean, wow, folks. Um, it's not the only word that comes to mind, but uh, it's, it's definitely the only one I can say behind this microphone. Um, <laughs> no, but, but seriously, I think about the countless late nights spent studying seemingly miles away from my bed, and I, I really just say, wow. I think about my uh, marriage pact, who ghosted me almost immediately. <laughs> and I say, wow, like, <laughs> the one that got away. <laughs> but I also think about the wonderful people I've met and the times I've spent with them, learning beyond just what's inside the call curriculum. And I say, wow. So. As this holiday season is upon us, I want to encourage everyone to take a moment to appreciate all the wows we've had this year, both the good and the ones we maybe could have done without. And let's also cherish the community, the people we've decided are like family here, the people who are with us when we need them the most, and those that bring us a sense of peace and bring us joy. So on behalf of the Black Student Organization and myself, I'd like to wish you all a happy Yule Log, and if I don't see you all before we leave, I hope you have an amazing restorative break, and best of luck with your finals. Thank you. Yule Log is a cherished tradition at William & Mary, and we are so glad that you are able to join us tonight. We hope that these reflections on peace, joy, and gratitude will inspire all of you as part of our campus community to embrace and carry on the spirit of Yule Log long after the last piece of holly has burned. Thank you to all of our student speakers. Now we are excited to introduce a special guest, President Catherine Rowe. Happy you luck, William and Mary. Wow, that crowd is huge out there. Looks like you're all the way out to the Sunky G. Is that right back there? Woo! Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. You know that it is a long-standing William and Mary tradition that the president reads a story at Ulog. And when I got here, I partnered with the President's Aides that year to pick one, and I've been doing that ever since. So every year it's a surprise, and 
The president's aides are the ones who curated it. We had to read maybe a dozen different stories, maybe 20, to get this one. This is a story that's called Snow Globe Wishes. And it's about loving what happens when your daily life is disrupted. And you find that you can make new kinds of community together when everything gets snowy. I hope you enjoy it. Snow Globe Wishes by Aaron Dealey, pictures by Claire Shorrock. Lights go out. Fierce clouds blow in, garlands fly on frozen wind. Lost connections, phones, computers, bundled homeward bound commuters. Traffic slows, roads disappear beneath the worst storm of the year. Picnic dinners, candlelight, darkness draws us close tonight. Blanket forts, crawl in, scoot over, kitten purrs. Me too, barks Rover. Snow globe wishes, close your eyes. Snow plows, rumble, lullabies. Then slowly stretching morning yawns, look, brilliant skies, rose golden dawn. Wake up, a whisper from the snow. Do you hear its soft hello? Magic sparkles, beckons, swirls. Come outside, dear boys and girls. Children hear it best, they say, but what if on this snow globe day, familiar families shake their busy lives, heavy doors flung open wide, and out they go, ones, twos, threes, fours, in cities, towns, and right next door, outside to winter wonderland. Who will be the first to grab a hand that grabs a hand and then another Neighbors, strangers, sisters, brothers, what if, dear friends, on this snow globe day, everyone comes out to play? To share a smile, to catch the spirit, laugh until the world can hear it, and pass it on as bright eyes glisten. Do you hear what they hear? Listen. Peace on earth, right now, right here. Peace for all throughout the year. Thank you. Now, please join us as the Barkdale Trouble Chorus and William Mary Choir lead us in singing Let It Snow, because we need some.
Thank you, President Rowe, William and Mary Choir, and Barksdale Treble Chorus. Now we welcome Colleen Grace, President of Mortarboard, and Catherine, Re Catherine Webb, President of Omicron Delta Kappa, who will share with you the history behind the tradition of the Yule Log. The ceremony of the Yule Log is believed to have originated with German tribes in Northern Europe as part of their winter festival. In medieval times, a log, which was sometimes the entire trunk of a tree, was selected on candle mass and carefully stored to dry out for the summer. On Christmas Eve, it was dragged into the house and kindled with the unburned parts of last year's log, which had been saved for that purpose. The Scots and the English later adopted the custom, adding it to their Christmas celebration, and the tradition arrived in America with the first colonists. According to legend, it was considered good luck for the log to burn throughout the 12 days of Christmas. Since it was the custom of some households to declare a holiday for servants while the Yule log burned, every effort was made to assure its longevity. Folk tales related that the servants would soak the log in water so that it would burn slowly and last throughout the 12 days. When Dr. Grace Warren Landrum, Dean of Women, first introduced the Yule Log Ceremony at William and Mary in 1930. The affair was elaborate and required a huge cast. The president of the college would dress in colonial costume as Lord of the Manor, and his assistant dressed as the Lord of Misrule. A young child, usually from a faculty family, poured wine over the log and threw the first piece of holly into the fire. Announced by a regal trumpet fanfare, costumed log carriers and were joined by hog carriers who brought a boar's head into the great hall with the log. The ceremony was discontinued after the outbreak of World War II and was revived afterwards with a less elaborate format. Each part of the ceremony has an allegorical meaning based on ancient superstitions. Thus, the sprig of green, symbolizing the woes of last year, is cast onto the fire to banish those woes forever, to protect the house from ghoulies and ghosties and things that go bump in the night. Wine is poured into the fire during the traditional blessing of the log. The ashes of the log are used throughout the year to continue to ward off evil. William and Mary alumni and young patriots celebrated this season with merriment. For students today, the Yule Log Ceremony is a welcomed break between finals and an opportunity to gather together in the holiday spirit and appreciate the diverse religious customs of our community. Thank you, Catherine and Colleen, for sharing the history of the ceremony. Now, here to serenade us with their Yuletide melody, I present the gentlemen of the college. day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. Oh, nice. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, day of Christmas my true love gave to me five golden rings. Four calling birds and ten turtle doves. And a partridge in a pear tree. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Nine days of dancing, eight days of milking, seven days of milking, six days of milking. You better not shout. You better not pout. You better not, pout. You better not tridge in a pear tree. On the ninth. No, no, sorry. No, no, no. On the eighth. No, no, no. On the seventh. And two turtle doves, the boar's head in hand, there I be decked with bays and partridge in a pear tree. Okay, what number were we on? Uh, uh, 11. 11? 11? 11? 11. 11. Okay. 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 On 
the eleventh day of Christmas my true love gave to me. Eleven pipers piping, ten lords and leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight maids and milking, seven swans are swimming, six geese and laying, five golden rings, four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer. rub a thum thum diddly dum diddly dum me and my troll day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Christmas, my true love gave to me. Wish you a Merry Christmas. We both. Oh, 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 Jack Ross nipping at your nose. I'll be home for Christmas. And a hound dog in a pear tree. Three fat hens and a duck. Quack! <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Before we conclude the ceremony, we have important instructions to ensure that this last part goes smoothly. First, we would like to bring attention to Colonial, Williamsburg, Colonial Williamsburg's Grand Illumination event, which will feature fireworks starting shortly. Please do not be surprised if you hear the sound of fireworks. In a moment, we will begin our traditional passing of the Yule Log through the crowd aided by our very own criers and choir. The criers will walk in front of the logs announcing their location and asking you to move aside while the choir will follow immediately behind the logs singing the alma mater. In order to avoid what has been an uncomfortable log jam in the past, we ask that a majority of you go and grab some hot cider and cookies by the sunken gardens and take a look at the doves decorated by students and alumni hanging on the Wren portico before entering the Great Hall. The Wham Band, Big Band, Kleptomaniacs, and Double Take Acapella will entertain you with some holiday tunes as you enjoy refreshments located in front of the Yule and Tucker porticos. When you enter the Great Hall and reach the fireplace, throw your sprig of holly into the fire to symbolize the disappearance of your troubles and the rebirth of a fresh new year. If you haven't received a sprig of holly yet, we have more available at the entrance to the Great Hall. A sprig will be handed to you as you move into the building. As you wish away your troubles, please consider donating to the Williamsburg House of Mercy in the jars at the entrance to the Great Hall. Once you've thrown your holly into the Yule Log flames, exit the Great Hall and proceed out the side doors to the left. If you would like to take a picture with President Rowe, she will be standing on the steps of the Wren Chapel. We hope that you've enjoyed tonight's celebration. Abigail and I wish you the best during this holiday season. We are incredibly thankful for the opportunity to coordinate this, this event and bring our community together. And now, as the Yule Log will proceed through the crowd, we invite you to join the William & Mary Choir as together we sing the alma mater.
Because you guys are out of the way to count this. Camera? Please don't the camera. Thank you. 